monster is one example, but a little closer to home, there's Bigfoot. And here now is science editor Michael Gillen joining us this morning from WCVB in Boston. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Joan. You know, like everybody else, I've been hearing about Bigfoot all my life, but I'm a scientist, so I'm skeptical. And that's why I really couldn't pass up a chance to visit uh, Bigfoot's supposed stomping grounds in the Northwest, where there is a new high-tech search just getting underway. Bigfoot is said to be six to eight feet tall, weighs three to seven hundred pounds, to be covered with long dark hair, and to have very little neck, human-like face, and feet that are enormous. Like that. They're coming from half a mile away and sounding as though it was just a hundred yards away. The amazing thing about it is how close it came, how fast it came, and it's walked. It would be at the same speed as if someone was jogging and feet. D.W. Patino has never gone public with his story before, for fear he would be ridiculed or lose his job as a police officer. Well, I came down the next morning to look for the footprints, and then as you'll see, you'll see from the pictures I had, it was incredible. How big were they? They were probably 10 inches deep and maybe about 16 inches wide. Yeah. Since the 50s, there have been a quarter million Bigfoot sightings, mostly from northern California to southern Alaska. At least some of the evidence is fake, but some is intriguing enough that science is finally swooping in. Decades ago, Peter Byrne had no luck finding the abominable snowman in Nepal. So now he's here in Oregon searching for Bigfoot, with funding from Boston's Academy of Applied Science. Now, Michael, this is the um, test site here, and this whole area has sensors buried in the ground. When something activates them, they send a signal to the cameras in the tree, the cameras take a photograph of whatever is passing through here. Have you had any hits? We've had deer go through, and elk, that kind of thing. No Bigfoot? No Bigfoot yet, no. The Bigfoot Research Project is the most ambitious high-tech search ever, with its own Bigfoot hotline, and computers to pinpoint Bigfoot's reported seasonal migration up and down the Northwest. At Project Headquarters near Portland, Peter Byrne showed me a controversial home movie filmed in Northern California back in 1967. And when she turned, she turned the whole body around. Well, it's quite possible that like gorillas, she can't look over her shoulder. So why couldn't this just be a person in a monkey suit? You see this very fluid movement. You see muscle movement in the arms and the legs. Extremely difficult, if not impossible, to produce in a fur suit. And again, what we see here fits exactly the description we've had from over 120 eyewitnesses. Some Native Americans believe he's a spiritual being. Others today believe he's a long-lost relative of Gigantopithecus, giant Asian apes that went extinct 400,000 years ago. To ecologist Robert Michael Pyle, author of Where Bigfoot Walks, the legendary giant fills a huge void in our lives. We seem to require some sort of a creature, the more like us the better, but different from us as well. Something beyond the campfire, a boogeyman, if you will, or a boogie woman that needs to be there to give us caution about the wilder world. Kyle thinks Bigfoot might actually exist, but after so many years and with so many people in hot pursuit, why hasn't Bigfoot been found by now? It's probably a hominid and uh, probably is uh, much more intelligent than other animals we're used to dealing with out in the wild. From that night, from my experience, I believe it was, it was an animal, not a person. We examined the photographs of the footprints very carefully. And then there's the character and the integrity of the young man himself. And I think he and his fiance did see one. It's, it's changed my life. It's like it happened two seconds ago. I'll never forget it. All right. Now, I want to know how long this high-tech search is going to go on. And if you're any less skeptical now. Well, you know, the, the search is going to go on for several years, and, you know, I always yeah. try to keep an open mind, Joan. I, that's why I did this segment in the first place, and everybody loves a good mystery, including me. But, you know, I'm a scientist, so I have to put my foot down. <laughs> we, need more, we need more than hearsay evidence. Real material evidence is what we need, and one of the exciting developments here is that they have collected a hair sample they're going to test using the same uh, techniques they used in the O.J. Simpson trial, and we're going to keep up on the story. Maybe in the next several months we'll find out what the results of that test are. We noticed that you didn't want to put your foot in your mouth. There you go. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Thanks, no, Michael. thank you. <laughs> you All right, Charlie.